There are certain rules that govern limits. These are going to be good for us to review. Let's recall the following very useful rules. The first rule for limits is something like a summation rule. If I have two functions f and g, I take the limit as x approaches a of f plus g of x, then that evaluates to the limit of f as x goes to a plus the limit of g as x goes to a. That's the summation rule. Next up is a product rule. If I have the product of two functions f and g, then the limit as x goes to a of f times g of x is really the limit of f as x goes to a times the limit of g as x goes to a. Let's see, we got a summation rule, product rule. Oh yeah, right, we've got a quotient rule that follows the same pattern. If I have the limit as x goes to a of f divided by g, then that's the limit of f divided by the limit of g, obviously, but got to be a little bit careful here. You want to make sure that denominator does not evaluate to zero. Otherwise, you have problems. These three rules are really great, but there's a fourth that is even more useful and universal. This is something like a chain rule. This says that if I take the composition f composed with g and look at the limit of that as x goes to a, then what we get is the limit of g as x goes to a fed into f or composed with f. Now, you got to be a little bit careful here. This only applies when f is a continuous function, but this is super, super useful and super deep. There's something about the fact that continuous functions respect limits that really gets to the heart of what continuity means. Let's take a look at an example or two of how these rules make limits really easy to evaluate. Consider the limit as x approaches 1 of, let's see, 3x squared times log of quantity x e to the x plus quantity x minus 1 to the fourth, all divided by 4x squared minus 3x plus 1. Is this going to be hard? No, it's not going to be hard. We can apply all of those limit laws and simply evaluate at the limit point. Let's see if I plug in x equals 1, 3x squared, that's 3, log of, oh, blah, 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 log of e divided by 4 minus 3 plus 1. That's just three halves. That's super nice. Now, things can get a little more complicated. Consider the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 6x plus 8 divided by 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. This looks simple, but you've got to be careful. When I try to evaluate this, I get 0 over 0. That's not going to work. But these quadratic polynomials factor. Each has a quantity x minus 2 factor within it. So if I factor those out, cancel numerator and denominator, I'm left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 4 divided by 2x minus 1. That evaluates to negative 2 thirds, and this is fine. There are no worries. Most functions are continuous functions, right? So everything's going to be great, especially using the chain rule for computing limits. That may be, but still, you have to be careful. What about the following improper limits? Consider the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Consider the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x, all divided by x. These are improper limits. They both evaluate to 0 over 0. Nevertheless, the limits exist. You may have memorized these before. You may remember that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x is 1, and that the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x equals 0. That's great if you remember that, but why? Why is it true? It's much better to understand the reason behind these results rather than simply memorize what the answers are. Understanding the meaning, the reason behind these improper limits, that's what we're going to address next.